The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter on Patty's Page. would like to introduce my special guest. His name is John C. Cowdy, and he is an, uh, an uh, he is a painter. Uh, he worked, what else did you work at there? Oh, I was in the printing industry for about 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. You don't look that old, my friend. Oh, I am that old. I have four grandkids, so I'm that oh, old. Oh, exactly there. <laughs> So how many brothers and sisters? Uh, Believe it or not, I have 12 brothers and sisters. I was born in one of 13 children. Who's the oldest? I am Irish Catholic. I am not. Quite, liter quite literally just another potato in the pot. Well, my granddad is from Glasgow. But oh. his, but our great, great parent, grandparents came from Cork. Mm. So there you go. We're Canadian, eh? Oh. Yeah. Toronto, actually. So uh, when you were uh, growing up, which schools did you go to? Oh, well, we I went to parochial school, um, K through eight, you know, St. John's New Haven, go Raiders. Oh, right. um, it's so, it's, it's something that I treasure because uh, I mean, I didn't just go to school with those kids. I, I grew up with them and they're still my friends to be this day. I still see see them around town and and it's just you always stop and say talk and how are you? How's your kids? How's your grandkids? That kind of thing. It's just it was a wonderful way to grow up. Now, my doctor, Dr. Gerald Kelty, is your brother then? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's my younger brother. Younger? Almost. He's been my doctor since we moved here 12 years ago. Uh, I have two brothers that are doctors. Really? And two brothers that are engineers. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, one retired from the Army. Uh, one uh, owns his own business in Chicago. Uh, one was a college professor, you know, they're, they're aging now. I'm one of the babies. So a lot of them are retiring or getting ready to lucky dogs. I wish I was, but um, it's a, it's a very successful family. Mm -hmm. um, the girls also a couple of nurses, uh, business owners, stuff like that. Um, I have eight brothers and four sisters. And mm -hmm. if you want to know what it's like growing up in a family like that, well, it's not the Waltons. I can tell you that <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a little bit different than that, but uh, it's not all love and kisses all the time. But uh, yeah, when you get them fighting each other, I know what it's like, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens. You get that many personalities. They're not all going to get along. Clash. Clash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the way it is in a family. <laughs> yeah. When you were growing up, who influenced you the most? Who was your mom? Um, you know, it was probably my mom. I have to say that. It was probably, she was a very, she had 13 kids. She had to be a very strong willed person. Very, very strong woman, I would say. Um, she ruled that house with a wooden spoon. I know. And um, <laughs> she had 13 kids. She was like a ninja with that wooden spoon. So uh, I would say she told she taught us to um, go after what you wanted because nobody was going to give it to you and you had to work for it. You had to work for it. You had to ask for it. Don't wait for anyone to give it to you. You had to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, correct. I hear you now. So you got a wee family, do you now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a wee family. So as a 13 in your, your own family? No, I, I have two children. Um, apparently I'm not as good a Catholic as my parents were. Oh my God. Because um, I only have two children. Right. Uh, my son is 31 and my daughter's 27. Um, and between them, they have four little girls of their own. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter has one, my son has three little girls. And uh, every one of those little girls has me wrapped around their finger. Oh, cool. And every one of those girls knows it. Oh, they know it. Yep. They know it. So I guess what it's like going to be around Christmas time then? Well, this year we, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, you know, this year is a whole different, different story. I mean, we were able to get together uh, over the summer a couple of times, but, you know, I mean, with the, the pandemic numbers just going off the charts here lately, I'm a little worried about Thanksgiving and Christmas. What was your first job then when you, uh, where'd you go? Did you go to college or university? Yes, I, I went to University of St. Francis here in Fort Wayne. I uh, studied commercial art, right. which uh, that's really not a thing anymore. Uh, I mean, it's more graphic design and that type of thing. It's just commercial art then was, was it, it got you a job in the printing industry, which is what it did. So um, I, I went from there and uh, always enjoyed the finer art, but you know, you have to make a living. Right. So uh I've pretty much done everything there is to do in the printing industry, including running a printing press. Um, but that's a that's a dying industry. Thanks I noticed to, that because when computers, I... computers and copiers are are just killing that industry. Mm -hmm. So I, I I've kind of segued into to more administrative office work, mm -hmm. and I work for the Red Cross in Red uh, Cross. That's in, great. Uh, blood donor man and blood donor recruitment how is that coming along with the red cross how they get well it's uh, much better than it was last spring we we've learned how to have blood drives during a pandemic mm -hmm. it's uh it's a different ball game uh, you can't have the big crowds you used to you've got to do it in in a medium-sized setting that you can really control um just like everybody else we've learned to adapt how do you screen the blood? Well, I mean, everybody gets uh, temperature taking and um, has to fill out a questionnaire. Even me, every time I walk into the building, you, every time you come into a Red Cross facility, you have to pass the screening and you, you get your temperature taken and you must wear a face mask at all times right. or you must leave the building. I mean, it's just, it's, we cannot have, and even with that, you know, I mean, th there's going to be risks involved. You start, when did you start to be interested in painting? Well, I've always done art, but um, there for a while, most of my art uh, pretty much consisted of Cub Scout projects and, and, science fair displays for my kids for a lot of years. And uh, as they grew older and, and started to go off on their own in their later teenage years, uh, I picked up my paintbrushes again. And, and yeah, at first I thought it was gone forever. I mean, it's, it's so out of practice, but I stuck with it. And um, I've been really serious about it for about 12 years now, which I, I always said it's been about eight, 10 years, but but I noticed the other night that some of my paintings are 12 years old. So I, know. I, I, I can't say eight to 10 years anymore. It's been a little longer than that. What kind of style? Of well, I, I paint exclusively in watercolors. Okay. I do. I, somebody told me when I first got started, if you want to be really good at something, don't jump around, stick with one thing. And I, I, I took that as, I, I really listened to that. So I, I, I only do watercolors and I used to be a very tight 
very yeah. realistic painter. Mm -hmm. But as time has gone on, I've become looser, much more impressionistic, uh, a, a lot quicker, a lot, get it down, get the impression of it. Don't worry about the putting the eyelashes on the people, just yeah. make, them be, make them people. And, and I really enjoy that type of, of, of painting. So that is pretty much what I've stuck with for about the last, oh, I'd say about eight years now. You are, do you exhibit your artworks? You exhibit, Excuse me? You exhibit your artwork? Yes, um, I exhibit around town, around Fort Wayne a lot and into some of the state competitions. Mm. Uh, I am represented by Paradigm Gallery here in Fort Wayne, which is at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. Uh, I usually have six to eight pieces there. Right. And I, I, I try to uh, be involved in the Art Link shows, Fort Wayne Artist Guild shows, th things of that nature. And I also paint on location around town quite a bit during the, during the summer months. Just go out and, and set up an easel and paint right there. You're just a painting fool. I, I try to be. <laughs> Better than being just a fool. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, you are a member of several watercolor societies. Yes, I, um, there's a watercolor society of Indiana I've been a member of for about 10 years now. And uh, I've recently joined the American Watercolor Society, uh, which is in New York City. Uh, with the goal of, of, you know, participating at the national level eventually. Um, that's a big jump. You're, you're, there's a lot of talented people out there. there yeah. It's a big jump. All right. There's a lot of uh, people doing beautiful work just like you mm -hmm. compete against them, eh? Yes, you'd have, and some that have been doing it for 50, 60 years. Oh. Well, you're just a baby to them. But yeah, yeah, I'm just a baby work. to them. Well, you do excellent work. At, you you well, mature you. as you go, uh, you know, practicing, uh, doing what you're doing, your painting. As you get older, as uh, you get more relaxed, like you said, your paintings come out different. Um, you don't draw the paint. You know, you don't draw the uh, actual scene, or do you? I used to draw it out almost like paint by number. Remember the old paint by number things? I used to be that exact. Right. Um, now, I kind of just slap it just, on. <laughs> just uh, get a get a general outline of where I want things to be and go. Well, or not or not draw at all, which is called direct watercolor, which you just start painting. Well, you're more and experienced it, now, you know. Yes, it, it takes a little bit of a, a competence to do that, but uh, you just, you, you learn, and you learn what you can get away with and what you can't. What is uh, Indiana plein air paint? Okay, it's, it's plein air. Plein air. It's a, it's a French term that uh, no, it's <laughs> means painting on location. Ah. If you're painting on location, you're painting plein air. It's, it's a, a, a French kind of pretentious artist term, kind of means like apple pie and ice cream is mm. apple pie a la mode. And it. everybody knows that. It's just, it's just, it's like that. It's just, it's just a, a different way of saying something. Um, and they have an entire group in Indiana and they meet periodically throughout the summer, through spring, summer and fall. And there usually isn't a week that goes by that they're not having a, a, an event somewhere in Indiana where you can get together and paint either as a competition or just as, as a get together. Some of them are just friendly get togethers. Others are big, big competitions. Mm. Uh, we have one here in Fort Wayne it's uh, every year late August. This year will be uh, year number five. And uh, it's called the Kikianga Plein Air event. Oh, yeah. It's, we, 
hold it during the uh, Taste of the Arts, which is uh, downtown Fort Wayne. And last year we had 57 artists from as far away as, as Maryland and Florida. And they produced total probably 200 paintings and they have to be of Allen County. They can be of Amish country. They can be of downtown Fort Wayne. They can be of the river. They can be of one of the parks, but it has to be located in Allen County. And the, the amount and the, the level of work this year was very, very high. It was, it was an amazing thing. It's a whole week long event, has a lot of different. Mm. We, one night we'll, we paint nocturnes, which are painting at night. Right. which everybody uh, brings out their little lights and, and <laughs> sets up at night and paints. Um, they have an event called a quick draw, which is uh, a 90 minute timed painting. You go from blank canvas to framed painting in 90 minutes. Right. And uh, I like that one. That's a fun one. You go out into the woods or? Oh yeah, we go, we'll go out to the woods out to people's farms. We'll do it downtown Fort Wayne in the track, uh, right on the sidewalk, uh, West Central neighborhood. We'll go to um, basically anywhere. So can you do uh, painting by a picture people give you? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, during, now I don't paint outside in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it, uh, it's cold. You know, and, and uh, I bought a house for a reason, so I didn't have to, you know, stand out in the cold. Right. So I paint primarily indoors, not in the in the winter time. Now, at times, I don't know if I'll do it this year because of the pandemic. But last year, I, I set up it in like the middle of the downtown library and painted. Right. And I set up in uh, Glenbrook Mall one time and painted. And you have to ask permission to do that, but they, they don't they don't really mind as long as you're not trying to sell. And uh, you 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 garner quite a quite a crowd when you do it in public like that. So you can't be shy about it. But for the most part, I, I work from photographs during the winter. Do you do murals? I I personally do not. I know a lot of people who do. do there are many beautiful many beautiful murals downtown Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. I just personally have not gotten into them. Well, that's all right. You're doing okay otherwise, you know. Yeah, yeah. I am president of the Fort Wayne Artists Guild here in town. Uh, it's a not-for-profit organization of local artists. Uh, right. Basically, all you have to be is 18 years old mm -hmm. and willing to pay $30 yeah. We don't judge people in. Right. If you want to join, you can join. If if um, you want to show locally, we have many venues that you can sign up for to show locally. We do pop-up galleries, which are basically pop-up little one-day shops. We'll have. Yeah. Um, we, we do a, uh, a a winter gallery, which opens the day before Thanksgiving on Main Street this year. Uh, we have several member shows throughout the year, and we meet monthly at the uh, Allen County uh, Downtown Library, oh, and we will have um, artists demonstrate. We will have lecturers come in and talk, just, just things that we think that the art community would be interested in, but the best part of that that entire organization is art. Making art is such a, you know, it's just a solitary endeavor. A lot of times you're by yourself. We want to encourage those artists to come out and be part of our group, that be works. part of a yeah. tribe. Right. You know, well, like-minded people, and it really does help you grow as an artist. Um, I can honestly say without the Fort Wayne Artists Guild, I would not be the artist I am today. There's absolutely no way. 
Yeah, is it like a therapy or something like that? Getting it, it can be, especially this time of year, because if we can't meet, when we couldn't meet last fall, we started doing Zoom meetings like this, and we'd have fifty people on a Zoom meeting, just talking about art, and it was a yeah. it was a wonderful, wonderful outlet. Because I don't know about you, but when we were all locked down, mm -hmm. it was it's, it was terrible. Okay. I'd never had to go through that in my life. And it was it was depressing. It's like and that, that kind of thing's really helped. Do you have a picture? I need a picture to show me then. I do. I have seven. Ah, like uh, this being a, oh, a more a more impression of this is a parking lot. This is the parking lot outside the Red Cross. And you never know what can be a painting. It's just, it's not my job so much to paint them. It's my job to find them. Right. As soon as it clicks, you have to. Yeah. I, I am doing a lot of cars and most of your paintings. Are yes. Website. And um, speaking of nocturnes, let me see if I can get the glare off of that. Oh, there. The this is a nighttime painting of down on the landing wow. on Columbia Street. And we were down there actually painting, and I turned around and took this picture of this guy, this gentleman here turned around to stare at me, and I took his picture. <laughs> and when I uh, looked at it on my phone, it's like, that's a painting. So th this is my my latest favorite here. That is this so is, this, beautiful. This is my latest favorite painting. So you did one. You showed me. Uh, with a boat. Yeah, yeah, that that the story behind that was is, is every year in January, I, I make a list of, of things I'd like to do that year, mm -hmm. you know, for art, a bucket list, that's what they call it. And one thing on my bucket list was go to Europe. Ooh. So we made plans to go to Europe, a group of us in September. And if you know anything about September, in Europe, Americans weren't allowed. Europe was closed. So um, I was pretty depressed that I didn't get a go. And um, because it, it, if you're an artist, you know, you have to make it to Paris once in you your life. It's, if it's like- yourself somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a pilgrimage. Right. You have to go. Wow. But um, I was, uh, complaining that I didn't get a go. And people who have been there, mm -hmm. friends of mine started sending me pictures of it. And one of them sent that picture and said, here, paint this, paint this, paint this. And when I got the picture of the boats, it's a, a um, it was a uh, picture of the Sen and with a, with the houseboat on it. Mm -hmm. And with the, with the, um, a bridge and the Eiffel Tower in the background. And it was just, it was just gorgeous. And I, I, as soon as I was done painting it, I was like, oh, this isn't gonna be around long. This is, this one's gonna sell. And exactly. I put it in the Covington, or uh, the, uh, I can't remember the name of the gallery. I was gonna give them a plug and oh. I can't remember, can't remember the name of it. Here in Fort Wayne. Yeah. Uh, out out southwest, uh, it's gone. I don't remember what the name of it is, but uh, I had a show out there in September, and that painting was up in the first day it sold. So uh, I knew it would, and hmm. they're not my kids, you know. They're just paintings. So yeah, you know, every once in a while, you get attached to one, mm -hmm. and. It was hard to see that one go. It was hard to see, it. and and most of them are not, but that one was. Can you show me another picture then, or do you have one? Oh, oh. I always have more. Uh, uh, there's another nocturne, awesome. but this one's a a winter one, oh, yeah. and uh, this one will probably be at. Uh, the Paradigm Gallery 
in December. That's what I painted it for. She said, do you have any winter scenes? So I went ahead and painted a few winter scenes, even though it was like 90 degrees when I was doing it. <laughs> 90 degrees. Oh this God. is, uh, oh, this is another one of those uh, uh, Paris pictures that somebody sent me when I couldn't go for real. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And I do just just landscapes too. Not as many anymore, but I do just landscapes that as well. Nice. I, do you sell a lot of those landscapes? Um, is yeah, it comes and goes. Comes and mm. goes. I and and you know you're talking about selling. It's it's uh you have to realize where you're at that that you're in Fort Wayne Indiana you're not you're not Chicago you're not New York right. you're not even in Indianapolis so you have to price accordingly right. but you don't want to give them away no so and uh, so and usually my prices are somewhere in between 200 and 800 dollars is that all <laughs> Oh, but I do I do prints as well, where yeah. I have prints made of of certain paintings, and I'll sell those for about fifty dollars. So, uh, do, will you ever do Promenade Park then? I have done Promenade Park, and those all sold. People love that park. That's where we did our event uh, this year. It, it's a it's a beautiful park. I, I like to go there not so much to paint the park, but paint the people in the park. Because there are always so many people there. And I've never seen anybody unhappy at that park. It's it's like so uplifting to go in there. Free. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a beautiful space. Spacious. Well, my friend, it is time to go. We are well, it, was, it was wonderful talking to you. Thanks for inviting me. I know. <laughs> I'm humble. Uh, what would you like to say to my audience to encourage them to do, do what they want and go after it? Believe in yourself. The, the heart, I've always told all my students when I teach that the hardest artistic voice to listen to is your own. Right. There's going to be a lot of people out there telling you what you should be doing. Do it how you want to do it okay. and do it through fundamentals. Don't don't try to run before you know how to walk, mm. but don't let anybody tell you that you're walking or running the wrong way. You go after your own dreams mm -hmm. as long as you don't hurt yourself or others. That's yeah. That's well, this is Patty Hunter at Patty's Page saying au revoir. Thank you. Bye now. Godspeed, my love, until we meet again. You're always in my heart and every dream. Don't let this time apart give in to all our fears. God will close from up above So until we meet again Godspeed my love God is with us always for the rest of our lives